you. I hope you can hear me. I hope your uh, preparation is really going nice. Yeah. So uh, today we'll be discussing uh, something about ortho, and that too uh, regarding the recent SRship exams which have been conducted at AIMS. See, basically the motto of discussing such papers is that uh, maybe such questions can be repeated in AIPG also. But more than that, we should be able to get the concepts around those questions. Because the professors, the HODs, they generally run around certain limited concepts. So if they are taking out questions from those concepts, again they will be taking again the questions for EIPG from the same concept. So maybe let us try to understand those concepts. At the same time, there are certain questions which are, which are really difficult. We should not waste our time behind those questions. Like even for postgraduates, those questions are difficult. Nobody would want to want their students, the exam going students, to get all the 80 or 90 questions right. So because of that, they prepare certain questions which are highly difficult. If they are difficult for postgraduates, then of course they are going to be difficult for us also who are preparing for exams. With those things in mind, let us try to con uh, concentrate on certain questions whose concepts you will understand and on certain questions who can be directly, which can be directly repeated but should not be, you know, gone into detail. So with that, I will start with my first question which was on CBCT. Let us try to understand CBCT. Cone beam CT is now very popular. It is used in almost all the dental specialties. Right from radiology to orthodontics, even in endodontics it is used widely. So to understand CBCT, we might take a bit more time and it is really important. Maybe tomorrow uh, it will, there will be a time when CBCT will be same as OPG. So we are moving ahead and learning some modern technologies. With that, I'll start CBCT. CBCT is, of course, X-ray based imaging modality, ionizing radiation. It is not a, a non-ionizing radiation like MRI. X-ray based imaging modality and is similar to MSCT, which is multi-slice computed tomography. It is also called as a multi-detector computed tomography. But these are the two very good advantages of CBCT, which has made it really popular. Earlier, only CT scans, which had helical or spiral beams, the patient would have to sleep or sit, and then machine would roam around the patient to take those CT scans, which are called as multi-slice computer tomography or multi-detector computer tomography. Now. CBCT, in comparison to these CT scans, it, uh, it leads to le very far, far less radiation exposure, at the same time reduced cost and high spatial resolution. What is spatial resolution? I will come to that. But you understand that it has less exposure, radiation, reduced cost and high spatial resolution. This can be an MCQ and which has been asked in this assertion exam, like CBCT, the advantages of CBCT are all except less radiation exposure, yes, reduced cost, yes, one of the option was less spatial resolution, but it is, of course, it has high spatial resolution. If you go into history of CBCT, in 1998, the first CBCT machine for imaging maxillofacial region was used in 1998. Has been reported by Mozo et al. Now let us understand the principle of CBCT. The principle is same as the conventional CT. 
except for the type of the beam. The beam which is used in CBCT is a conical beam, hence the name cone beam CBCT or cone beam CT. So, instead of spiral or the helical beams of CT which were used earlier, now we have a conical beam exposed to a much larger area. But at the same time, if you use only one beam for much larger area, you might have some resolution problem. But at the same time, it is using something called as two dimensional FPDs, which are flat panel detectors, which helps in increasing the resolution. So, these flat panel detectors in CBCT they enable the scanner to obtain required information of the region of the interest. In, in only a single rotation or maybe sometimes in two rotations. These rotations can be full 360 degrees or in some machines, some companies they go up to 210 degrees. So, it can be a bit less. Now, the essence is that machine acquires multiple image, like when it is rotating, it acquires multiple images at various angles during rotation. Those images are built into some algorithm in computer and you get a 3D object. Now, this resolution of this 3D object can be measured. Resolution is how much far better you can see an object in the CBCT as compared to a nearest object in the same CBCT. How far you can distinguish two objects in the same CBCT. This is called as resolution. Spatial resolution is how uh, is, is with respect to some distance. Like if two lines are placed with respect to distance. Like for example, there are two lines. Now, with respect to a distance, how far you can detect them as two separate lines. Now, if somebody is standing at 20 feet distance, they might think that there is only one paper which I am holding. But if they come near, they will find out that it is not one, but it is two paper. This is with respect to distance, resolution with respect to distance, which is called as spatial resolution. CBCT has very good spatial resolution. If you see in figures that the current CBCT scanners have the ability to acquire data at voxel size. Now, voxels are the minutest part of the scanned image. Now, if the dot, if the minutest part is as small as 0 0.08 millimeter, then the resolution is very good. CBCT is able to acquire data at voxel size. The most divided part voxel size is 0 0.08 millimeter to 0 0.4 millimeter. This is a range because there are different CBCT scanners by different companies. So, 0 0.08 millimeter to 0 0.4 millimeter of voxel size can be acquired using these CBCT scanners. Also, if you want, you can uh, measure with respect to resolution power. Now, resolution power is measured clinically by the ability to, as I told you, detect two lines separately. CBCT can detect up to five lines that are more number of lines in a millimeter as compared to the conventional city or multi slice city. If conventional city in a millimeter can detect only two to three lines, CBCT can detect up to five lines per millimeter. Hence the advantage of CBCT. Now, we go on to the next slide, uh, sorry, the next uh, resolution which is temporal resolution. Temporal is with respect to time. 
सिबीसीटी हैज अ लिमिटेड टेम्पोरल रिजोल्यूशन एज कम्पेयर टू the mbct or mscd which is which are the convention city like the temporal with respect to time the cbct can resolve two object in the same uh scan little less than the ct scan at the same time with respect to contrast resolution cbct we can see is has sub optimum slightly less soft tissue imaging that is low contrast detectability of cbct lcd is 10 hu hu is ounce per unit compared to one resolution one ounce per unit resolution of modern or uh, sorry multi slice ct that is cbct has limited temporal resolution limited contrast resolution but it has very high very good advantageous spatial resolution also contrast resolution is measured with respect to gray scale the gray scale the contrast range is between 12 and 16 bit gray scale let us also see certain abbreviations which have been asked in this assessment exam dicom dicom is digital imaging and communications in medicine now what is why is dicom asked in our exam what is the need of asking such thing now we are moving into an age in which modern technology like digital x rays digital cephalograms opg cbct ct scans and many other image producing uh machines which we use they store their image in certain type of file like how we have an image which can be jpeg format tiff format the same way different manufacturers they used to produce images of their radiological machines in different formats when they are in different formats you require different softwares different printing machines to hand it out to other doctors or sometimes to patients so it used to be really difficult in earlier time to handle store print or communicate these uh, objects or images which are obtained from the radiological machines so what they did was to decide a format which is universal for everyone dicom is a format like how there is jpeg format tiff format the same there is dicom format which is used for medical radiological purposes for example these days all the cbct machines they produce only dicom images not dicom it will be CT scans they also produce dicom images. Now it has become a universal format. So we all have some software in our computer which will be able to read dicom images. We don't need different different softwares to read them. We don't need different different softwares to send them. We don't need different different objects to print things out of those images. Hence, dicom. is a universal format which is also called as digital imaging and communication in medicine and it has been asked in this exam the abbreviation was asked next we have something called as mip which is maximum intensity projection this was also an abbreviation which was asked what is mip or mip stands for now what is mip if i try to explain in one or two lines when an x ray scan is obtained using some cbct or 